Hey, everybody. Remnant Revealed. We're back again, R&R. Mr. Rick Snyder and Chris Holland, we're here to share with you and uh, just uh, discuss some things that we've been noticing uh, throughout our communities and across our nation, really around the world. We've been getting good feedback. We have been. Uh, a lot of people liking what they've seen in the first uh, couple uh, podcast episodes uh, since we've been doing these, and it's kind of uh, supporting what we thought we would see, which was uh, people having a hunger, a desire uh, for what we're talking about, which is um, pointing them <clears throat> back to something that they can uh, get something from and yeah. also uh, provide to others. Something they can put their finger on and their mind on and uh, settle some issues of their heart. And, of course, you know, an anchor goes into the ground and holds what's floating above it uh, on point. Right. And uh, so I think these things we're talking about is really a fresh anchor. Uh, we, we don't want to get destroyed on the rocks of life. I remember one time uh, my son Preston and I, we were fishing in a uh, – I've got a little bass boat, and it got real, real windy. Mm -hmm. And so we talked about, I said, well, son, let's take a break. We'll go around the cove here, anchor down, and uh, we'll take a little nap because we've been fishing hard, uh, long hours and getting up early, going to bed late, and catching a lot of fish. But we were already tired. It was like the third day. So we went around this little cove. It was only the cove on the, the only one on the lake. Right. And... And anchored down, but I didn't realize it was the dam cove, right? Oh. Where the dam was. Oh, okay. All right. <clears throat> so we noticed it, and I said, well, it's okay. We'll hold here tight. Well, it was a sandy bottom. Mm hmm And so after about an hour or so of taking a nap, I woke <laughs> to realize I was hearing the sound of water. Right. And the boat was closer to the dam than what was healthy. Right. And uh, so I said, hey, uh, pull that anchor up. I'll take the trolling motor and motor us up just a little ways. We'll throw it out again. Well, I started out with the trolling motor and got the boat turned enough for him to release the anchor, and the trolling motor quit working. Okay. Now, of course, the so wind. So you got nothing controlling you. Nothing. Nothing. Other than the water and the wind. Thank you. And it's <laughs> blowing us towards the dam <clears throat> not a good place to be so i said it's okay i'll jump down start the big motor 200 horsepower mercury it'll pretty much get you out of trouble right so i jump back to the seat hit the switch nothing i don't even <clears throat> not a click not a buzz <laughs> no chirp like you normally hear when you go to start your boat motor nothing and we are progressing more and more and more towards the dam. So you know. So now no anchor, no trolling motor, and no power. Thank you. And the water temperature was like uh, 42 degrees. Good yeah. times. You're not going to swim to shore. So I said, evidently, I left something on, and the cranking battery has gone dead. Look in that compartment right there and hand me the jumper cables. There's a little pack of jumper cables there. I'll jump the motor off of the trolling motor. He said, you mean like that little bag that had, like, battery cables in it? I said, yes. How do you know about that? He said, oh, well, my brother borrowed them the other day. Or it was some time back, and he forgot to put them back. Mm. There's none there. Mm -hmm. They're empty. Mm-hmm. So while he's working the anchor, kind of walking us, uh, if we could, closer to the bank, I'm trying to rush and quickly switch a whole battery out with another battery. So now you're no, 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 no motor. No motor. No, no anchor. No trolling motor. No, no power. No and no connection. Thank you. We're in trouble bad. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Imminent demise. <laughs> those would be the words. And uh, so thankfully... I got the battery over there close enough, got it connected, the motor fired up, and we pulled out of there. Of course, it was the end of our fishing day because I had to dismantle the whole boat to mm -hmm. just about. I know it's mm -hmm. a little embellishment, but. And go change your drawers. Uh, thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. 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 So, you know, faith is really your anchor. 
when we talk about, I think the last time we were together, we talked about uh, believe but verify, right? Yeah, trust but verify. Trust but verify. Mm -hmm. And faith is really your anchor that keeps you founded and grounded in the issues of life when storms hit, when the wind's blowing very strong, right? right? And you're headed towards a very bad, tumultuous situation. Right. Um, the the thing that got us in trouble wasn't that our anchor wasn't there. It was there. Uh, it was what we were anchored in. Mm -hmm. And that was sand. Mm -hmm. So it didn't hold. So when we trust uh, in order to verify, uh, it's it's important that that trust is there. Right. Um, I talk to a lot of officers right now, and I mean a lot. That that their faith is really shaken uh, because they they're taught and trained that their faith is in their brotherhood, their faith is in their physical abilities, their faith is in knowing what to do in a very critical situation. You know the faith we put in our training, right? That's right. All the training that we get, all the things that we're taught through the academy, uh, through our field training officer, uh, through experience. Uh, handling severe situations over and over and over and over again builds a certain level of trust in our life. But what we're seeing now and the assault that we're seeing against uh, law enforcement and against those who uphold the law is severe. And it's severe enough now that those things seemingly are not working or being assaulted to the very depth of who law enforcement officers are. Right. The deepest honor and integrous place of their heart, their very spirit is being assaulted. Well, how do you fight spiritual things? You can't fight it with your duty belt and your duty weapons, and you can't fight it with your mind uh, because it goes another level deeper than that. It's interesting that you say that because that's exactly what <clears> – <throat> I hear from fellow officers all the time now, right, is that the normal tools of the trade are not working. Thank you. And what do you do, you know? <clears throat> so we're always going to adapt and improvise and overcome, right? But uh, how, do you, how do you step either through that challenge or around that challenge in a way that you can keep moving forward and uh, not only accomplish what you're out there to do, but do it in a way that preserves order, preserves our communities, preserves safety, but also preserves the officer themselves, their actual being, their their spirit being, if you will. And here again, that's what we keep always finding ourselves being drawn back to, which is uh, it's, it's something more than just your physical well-being, your mental, emotional well-being. It's really, again, the heart of the matter and the spiritual well-being of the officer. But oftentimes what I find that officers say is, in what I do, I can't find how is that connected to what we're talking about from this biblical perspective of policing, and uh, and how do we we were saying with the with the example you were sharing about being in the boat, right? Right. When you don't have that right connection, you then don't have the power that you need, right? That's right. To be able to direct and navigate the waters, if you will, right, and. and by being anchored uh, to the proper uh, place, the proper one. Well, you you are at the mercy of your circumstances always. Back to what we were saying. Circumstances don't dictate our character. And so, yep. you know, really kind of to dovetail from our, our, our less, last discussion on character, we talked, we really ended that with talking about, well, well, whose character? And often our officers find that, hey, I, I'm flawed, I'm broken. I'm not a good example of the character I would hope to have. The whole point is, and the whole message is, is that you can lay that down and pick up the character of the one who who, who heals the broken. That's right. Who is perfect in character. That's right. None of us are perfect in character. Uh, we, If you're going to determine your ability to function and watch over righteousness and be a righteous guard— you have to realize that your character isn't perfect. I don't care how perfect you think you can try to be. Right. It's not going to be perfect. But there is one who is perfect, 
and he is the one that holds the anchor. That's right. He's the one you can cast your anchor on. Uh, we're talking about Jesus the Christ. He's the one that you can cast your anchor on, uh, and uh, and he's the rock. That's right. And you can hold firm in him, knowing that you're not perfect, but that he is. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Rick and I trust that you heard something that will help your life. And if you believe that it would help others, please make sure and share. Like and subscribe and hit that bell so that you can be notified when the next podcast is available. God bless you and we'll see you soon.